I, I basically uh, <clears throat> took a different tack on, on, uh, on my remarks, uh, which will be brief. <clears throat> the first thing I'd say is that, um, and I think Colin, uh, as a former diplomat, um, you know, when you uh, finish the, the day and you're thinking about all the, the places that you lived, <clears throat> and you, you always had a special posting. Um, you always had a place in your heart that um, you felt the, you felt you felt good, <clears throat> and um, and Turkey is mine. Uh, and I've been to a lot of different posts, um, and you can call it the the, the country, the, the the history. There are all sorts of reasons why you should like Turkey. Um, I like Turkey because of the Turks, um, the friendliness. And uh, you could walk down the street in Ankara, and people would actually smile at you. Uh, uh, in Ottawa, it would be, I don't know, uh, a revolution if that happened. Uh, most people here have their eyes uh, uh, looking down at the cement. But in Turkey, um, it, was, it was something special. And my wife and I were, would be always indebted to the, the Turkish uh, people. Uh, Istanbul is a bit different. It's a bigger city, you know, people are hurrying a lot more, but still, um, if you could speak Turkish even poorly as I did and continue to do, um, it, was, uh, it was a great place. Um, so what I've done is I've sort of looked down south, south of the border and, and we all, we've all seen a, a Republican candidate talking about how to make America great again. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting to kind of give a few, few thoughts on how to make Turkey great again? You know, uh, not, not necessarily to its, uh, you know, Ottoman Empire status, but simply uh, what, what could Turkey do to um, improve its regional, uh, its regional role? And uh, so I came up with a few suggestions. Um, some of them are old ones, some of them are new ones. I'll go through them quickly, and uh, if you have any, uh, I'm sure there will be many who will disagree with what I have to say, especially on Syria, but that's what I'm here for. The uh, first thing, obviously, is solve the Armenian genocide question. Um, this should be uh, dealt with by a, as we say in French, a comité de, des sages that should take it, and academics and historians should debate it and beat it to death in some, you know, some cubby hole in a university, and then come out and say, well, you know, you, you should be either an apology or not, and, uh, and, and basically get it out of the political realm. And uh, it seems to me that's, uh, it's not a new idea, but it's something that's been said and not done. Um, and this is not in any order. Um, release the journalists. Journalism is not revolutionary. Uh, here in Canada, is you can almost take it as a, <laughs> a radio cadena, as we say in Quebec. There's nothing revolutionary about rad radio cadena. Uh, philosophy is revolutionary, but journalism is not. And keeping journalists in jail uh, doesn't do the regime any good. It doesn't increase its stability. Erdogan should know that and uh, should be a little more humble. And uh, so release the journalists. Um, there's no point keeping them in jail, uh, and when they're out, um, you, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll give a democratic airing of different views, and your regime will be even more stable than uh, keeping them in jail. Um, and then make some sort of enduring peace with the Kurds. Um, you know, you already do a lot of business with Barzani's Kurds in Urbid. Um, um, I, I think, and, and, and it was astonishing to me, um, when I talked to Kemalist, uh, uh, educated Kemalist uh, Turks uh, about the Kurds and, and giving them concessions on the educational front, they looked at me and they said, well, if we do this, they'll take, they'll take this much and then this much and then this much. Suddenly, I, I thought I was reviewing the 80s and 80s, 70s and 80s here in Canada talking about Quebec nationalism. But, uh, you know, it's the, this would help 
Turkey's regional and international role, and uh, especially in Syria, where uh, uh, the Kurds, uh, the PYD, are uh, are present. So, I think if if and, and it doesn't need to be some sort of major enduring uh, historic agreement. Uh, it can be a patchwork. It can be whatever it is, but I think it's time. Uh, to actually genuinely and not play political games uh, come to an agreement with the Kurds um, and, uh, and there should be give and take and uh, I think that would improve Turkey's uh, regional role, its regional profile incredibly. Um, I think, and this is new, this is something different. Turkey, in my view, needs to play a role in the Arab-Israeli conflict. Turkey, if it wants to exert influence in the region, it has to play an important role in that conflict. Uh, as, as you know, the conflict is at a, is dead in the water, or the, not the conflict, the, the peace agreement is dead in the water. Obama, was, Obama just didn't have uh, the political uh, support or the determination to get anything done. Turkey can play an important role and bringing the parties together, it can help bring the uh, Hamas and uh, the PLO together. That's one job it can do that it needs to do better. Um, but it can play an important role and a very positive role. And I think the allies would uh, would be even w would be very supportive of Turkey's involvement uh, to try and find a, a peace solution. We have a new pre new president. Inshallah, President Clinton uh, in November, and uh, I'm sure they'll give another try. And Turkey's involvement uh, would be uh, would would be salutary. Uh, change your Syria policy, uh, but not get out. Don't do anything. Uh, you know, everyone can see how much you've done for Syrian uh, Syrian refugees, uh, but. I mean, let's, I'm, I'm not a Canadian diplomat, and I do not seek to, you know, get behind Canadian foreign policy in Syria. It was as misguided as the American foreign policy was and the European foreign policy from the very beginning in Syria. Um, and so the Turks, at the beginning, they supported the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood, these were old people. These were old guys. Uh, that had been kicked out by the pair Bashar, by Bashar's father, and who had no knowledge of Syria anymore. Why would Turkey support the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria? They had no ground. They had no. They had. They had. Uh, they didn't have any impact on the ground. Uh, so my advice would be to support uh, the youth movement. These are the people who are going to be the ministers in the new Syria. And let's face it. You can't turn back. All this talk, okay, about somehow the Russians and the Americans getting together and having a, uh, you know, a, a, a talk, talk, uh, jazz, jazz uh, session. The end is this: the Syrian opposition will never, ever allow Bashar al-Assad to stay in Damascus, and the Turks have to be solid, have to be, uh, have to be. Il faut qu'ils soient solidaires. They have to support that, kind of, that uh, resilience. And I think the Turks should arm uh, the uh, Syrian opposition, the democratic opposition. It, you know, it's just ridiculous uh, to listen to Western media who say, oh, we don't know who the groups are. You, they know, we know, we know who the groups are. We know the ones that you're not supposed to give guns to and the ones that you should have given guns to. I met a commander on, uh, this was when Obama was preparing his re-election, too busy uh, to be re-elected. Syria was just, you know, on the totem pole of priorities, it was down at the bottom, next to Canada. So, uh, you know, the commander said, well, what are the Americans going to do? You know, when, when Obama gets re-elected, he, he'll bring in, I said, do you really support you and, and, and give you arms to fight Bashar? He said, well, if they think there are a few options now, wait until a few months from now. And he was right. And his words were prophetic. 
Huh? We have no options anymore. ISIL, to a, to a large extent in Syria, is a result of Western incompetence and wasting of time. We should have armed those youth factions that were, that were fighting dictatorship with their bare hands. Instead of doing that, instead of supporting people who share our democratic values, oh, it can't be. Democracy in the Arab world? Yes, democracy in the Arab world. The Arab awakening, okay? Uh, so the Turks, uh, I understand their, their, their regional predicament and so on, but in my opinion, the, they would do best to support the youth movement, to arm it, and take, um, uh, take a very clear stand in Syria. They, it, they have no choice. If they, Bashar cannot stay. He has to go. And the Russians and Iranian influence has to be reduced for Turkey to play a regional role of any importance. The second thing on the, the last, second last thing is that uh, Turkey, and I know the Turkish have been, they wanted, they pleaded with, with the West, give us a, a no-fly zone. No, 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 no. There was no reason for the no, but the Turks uh, asked over and over and over again, a no-fly zone, a no-fly zone. Could have saved millions of lives. No. No, nothing. So, uh, in my opinion, the Turks should establish a no-fly zone, and if the Allies don't want to go along, go along with it, they do it themselves. And the last thing, and let's hope there aren't too many Europeans in the room, beware of Europeans bearing gifts. Syria is a prime example. Okay, the you know, the Schengen visa uh, business, along, uh, you know put against what you've, what you've done to help them out of the Syrian refugee uh, mess. Uh, I wonder uh, who actually wins in that, uh, in that equation. But to be sure, and this is, you know, the Syrian, my Syrian friends, I, I tell them the same thing. I don't look, you know, they ask me questions. And so I'm giving you this, these views as someone who wants Turkey to succeed in the region, okay? And I think part of your lack of success is, uh, is the fact, and I never understood this, I'll, I'll conclude on this, I never understood this, and maybe I'm just not getting it, I never understood this kind of sacral sanct, uh, <clears throat> uh, in, in endearment, endearing yourselves to the Europeans. Um, why? I mean, any European nation would look out from a taxi as you go from the airport to Taxi Midana and look at all those ships in the Bosphorus. They would be jealous. They would be jealous. They would be jealous of the huge economic power that Turkey has. So why are you kowtowing to the Europeans? I never understood why. That's it. <laughs>